so this is just really <clears throat> these are just really reflections on on some of the things that happened at the University of Auckland and throughout the, the country here um, two or three years ago um, from my from my own position as both a student and and sort of I suppose um, a young aspiring academic as well so um, so in the so in the past few years we've seen the figure of the student begin to appear again at the border of change. The ad hoc organisation of grassroots activism has resulted in barricades, the storming of meetings, occupations and blockades. These ac actions articulate a confrontation with the logic of the university. The figure of the student has brought politics into the gaps between the hierarchy of rigidly built pedagogy and the injunction of capital. As university management extends rent-seeking measures through the enclosure of space, and as the cult of representation scuttles what is left of student associations, we find cracks appearing. New political subjects emerge through these cracks. All over the world, we have seen more and more disillusioned students in revolt from the United Kingdom around Europe in the mass actions of Chile and Quebec. Although revealing of a universal tendency, the heterogeneous actions of these student bodies are localised. And so here I wish to comment on one such example of this tendency that happened at the University of Auckland. Management at the University of Auckland have undertaken various efforts to embody the awkward marriage between the logic of austerity and the hastening process of financialisation. In response, we've seen the Auckland campus become a site for a previously dormant politics. Where higher education is concerned in Aotearoa, not since the rampant neoliberal reforms of the 80s and 90s, have we witnessed such direct confrontation between the administrators of governmental logic and those affected by their policies. In 2011, resistance to this process centred on a particular claim. Students and staff made the simple assertion of a largely hidden truth by claiming, we are the university. So we can undertake various attempts to describe the university or to, ma to imagine it. This undertaking already gives us a sense that the university is a misnomer of sorts. A borderless multiplicity, the university may be counted as one, but is no means one, by, mo by no means one thing. As something unified, the university is a fiction. Often this fiction takes on the romanticised role of the critic and conscience of society. For some it carries the nostalgia of a once great realm of thriving academic freedom now laid to waste by market fundamentalists. Or it is a place for the betterment of citizens developing the hopes of an informed democracy. In any case, the university is always sutured by a particular name located in a particular place or, a, or to a particular persona. So with persona, think of Columbus and people like that. Universities like Columbia. Never, nevertheless, in some sense, we are talking about an institution that is some, in some way concerned with education. Although, of course, this is not its sole concern, we cannot reduce what we understand as a university to this simple claim, or we run the risk of presuming something like what we are arguing against. How, however, if we take education as our starting point in order to think the university, I'm suggesting we might use an idea once given by Herbert Marcuse that all authentic education is political education. I want to suggest the usefulness of this formula is in the connection between education and politics. Consider, as Jacques Rancière points out, depoliticisation is the oldest task of politics. What is referred to as the political in the traditional sense is actually a kind of police operation that paradoxically, paradoxically does everything it can to ensure politics does not happen. It is a way of distributing what is sensible, what can be seen, what can be heard, and a process of fixing the way that things can be understood. The political in this traditional sense is therefore conceived as a privileged realm that leads to a somewhat aristocratic separation of not only what politics is, but also where it takes place. For the sake of clarity, this political domain is hereafter named for what it really is, i.e. a police operation. Rontier argues that we now live in consensual times. Or for, although for us it's, the problem is not, of, not one of bl blind consent. It is not that we are cultural dupes. In fact, it is only for elitists to claim that apathy and its idiots surround us. Rather, there is something more fundamental that binds most people to naturalise consent in an apparent reality where nothing much can change. This consensus speaks through anybody who practices unconscious discouragement by calling a young activist's attention to the reality of the situation. 
or by suggesting that political action from students is not only unrealistic, but can be reduced to immature, immature idealism. In Ronciere's words, what consensus means is, quote, not merely people's agreement amongst themselves, but the matching of sense with sense, the accord made between a sensory regime of the presentation of things and a mode of interpretation of their meaning, end quote. It is a matter of what makes sense. However, what appears is seen by virtue of what else cannot be seen. In order for consensus to work, there must be an excess. There must be something that is excluded and therefore cannot make sense. For the political subject, then, the goal must be to make non-sense, to bring forth all that is impossible and unrealistic, or to register that which cannot be seen or heard from this privileged point of separation. The traditional view of the university is conditioned by consensus. For Roncia, consensus is patrolled at the borders by the police. If the police order is the structured embodiment of a society where everything has its place, then the university is an, is an effective example of this. The university is like the old kind of politics, which is sanctioned and controlled in a particular place with its categories of identification and expectations of working for the good of one ab abstraction after another, the economy, the market, finance, capital, you name it. Concern with the circulation and expansion of the present, broken down into sets which are measurable, fixed and accounted for. The university in this way appears stately. It is governed by the logic of depoliticization and held together by an operation that reduces the university to the claim that it is only one thing, that it is a production line of knowledge in line with the needs of the economy. This operation prescribes what is supposedly sensible for a university, university and grasps the multiplicity of this onto the singular count of so-called economic reality. Nowadays, this view of the university ends with it being nothing more than a university subjected to the market. This is, after all, what makes sense. Far from creating false dichotomies between what is real and what is not, we need to distinguish the police operation from politics proper. Politics in the transformative sense ultimately reconfigures the operation of our understanding. In actuality, politics is the antithesis of the separation described above. Roncier notes it is rooted in the aesthetic anticipation of the future. Politics is the bringing into appearance of what is already here but cannot yet be seen. It is an aesthetic operation concerned with seeing and showing how to see. For Roncier, the distribution of the sensible reveals who can have a share in what is common to the community based on what they do and on the time and space in which this activity is performed. <coughs> so it is a petitioning out of parts, something that the university is clearly very good at. Against this, politics consists of transforming this space into a space of the appearance of a subject. The subject can be the people, the workers, the citizens. In this case, it is the figure of the student in the academic community. In consensual times, depoliticization is coupled with a particular idea of the subject. Our thinking around the subject tends to hinge on, on the idea that can be traced back to the conception of an individual. But this individual is always removed, contemplative, and ultimately, ultimately self-interested. This works neatly for the market model of the university. It relies on an individuality as numbers, as grades, as a score on a research index, or as consumers that choose from a product range of degrees and courses. We're all one against another or one against many, and yet somehow we are all the same. We are abstracted into the circulation of sameness, which is why the subject and the individual are found at an impasse when it comes to change. In contrast to this deadlocked subject quite individual, uh, Alain Badiou argues that the subject is rare because it cannot s co simply coincide with the individual. Rather, one must become a subject. Um, uh, what, sorry, one must become a subject rather than being subjected to a situation. This process is what Badiou calls subjectivation, a progression in which a subject is constituted through a connection to a body of truth via a decision. So by subject we mean here a body that affects change. There are subjects within the university, no doubt, and with their in their composition we will find individuals but not the atomized individual idealized by the market. Badiou argues, I would declare that it is insofar as living individuals enter into truth 
and hence into the composition of a subjectivizable body that they experiment with the universal. A social movement that continually reveals the miscounted elements on the fringe of a situation is a subjectivated body. The political subject is realized through a sense of action and movement. The subject connects the truth to a situation by enacting it. This is not only performative but is imminent. It is happening within the situation that it is composed of. So when it is happening within the university, as it happened at the University in the, in, uh, of Auckland in the 70s with Natomatoa activists, when they re-inscribed a, a historical truth on a war memorial on campus, and when it happened in 2011 when hundreds of students stormed the business school to claim that we are counted but have no part, that in spite of our routine exclusion from consultation, we are the university, it happened again when nearly a thousand students blockaded Simon Street in 2012 for the day of the national government's budget announcement. And this is how the claim we are the university works. It is a claim that says we, an alliance of the excluded, are the truth of the university. This truth does not simply end with the privileged claims of speakers who have access to the public sphere. It is metan a metonymic claim for the university is not simply me, rather it is composed of relations. It is just as much the person who carries out remedial tasks for low pay as it is a contingency of precarious labour that holds together the space where we assume the university is located. It is the place created by all those who are counted but have no part. We are the university eschews the abstractions of so-called economic reality to reveal an imaginary constitution of the ideal subject. It determines that we cannot be isolated into the neatly policed count of I, myself, or me, and this ideal student constructed by graphs, averages, and all the augmented fictions weighted by opinion does not exist. To say that we are the university is to refuse the logic that orders the situation, the situation into a fabricated hierarchy. It is a claim made by those who inexist from the point of view of management. In other words, they can't see us. That is, the students the workers, academic and the social community who produce everything that falls under the name of the university. In 2011, the University of Auckland Vice-Chancellor began a series of attacks on the working conditions of academic staff, displaying an unremitting disdain for the importance of research and the time it takes, and further embedding the university's reliance on unpaid and casual labour. In response to these attacks, the Tertiary Education Unit began a campaign called The University Is Me. The aim of the campaign was to reveal the face of the university and reveal who would be hurt by these attacks. However, there is a problem in reducing the politics of the situation into a battle of not you but me. The TEU campaign still missed the underlying truth, uh, whilst it, it was admirable in its attempts, it still missed the underlying truth of the university. And its campaign inadvertently fell into the trap of conceding the basic category of the university, i.e. consensus. It fell into the problem of conceding what makes sense by underlying its campaign on the terms of the university and the logic under which it exists. We are the university supersedes the claim the university is me. First in that it resists one of the most significant elements ordering the logic of capital, i.e. the individual. Although the claim we are the university appears to be singular, it is not one thing and cannot, cannot be reduced to one. We are the university is the name of a problem. It is not the name of an identity, a brand name, or the moniker of a group. Rather, it is a claim of political subjectivity. In, in contrast with the represent representational efforts of student associations, or indeed the campaign by the TEU, it is a presentation of truth by those who are counted but have no power. I should mention that I'm not sort of ragging on the efforts of the TEU there. It's just to make a distinction between what we were doing and what was happening with them. It is not representative in the way that most people expect a political entity to be. The claim operates at the border of a situation that sees the rent-seeking uh, ex expeditions of management closing down anything that truly resembles politics. It says that the university is a procedure constituted in relations. It is the metonymy of a truth that is held in common, that without the multiplicity of connections, nodes and interactive parts, there is no university. It is not possible to say that I am the university or the university is me without ignoring the truth. So to return to the formula, the only authentic education is political education. 
Education is political because politics is fundamentally transformative. A political education can transform the deadlock of our present. It is needed to break open the consensus that orders the situation and miscounts the elements we produce, or the elements that produce our world. The university is the place within the apparatus where ideas are produced. So to start with the university, we can begin with a simple but effective claim that we, who are not, are the university. Thank you. All right.